Last year, I did a tier list of all the games that I played in 2022, and now I'm doing it again. But for this year, it would be weird if I did it for last year's games, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anyways. I've got the games that I've played this year here. I'm going to rank them from S to D. S being the best, D being the worst. I've got best game here and then worst game here, which I'll do at the end. Uh, just kind of, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. My best game of 2023, my favorite one, and then worst game, my least favorite. I'll also mention that in my 2022 tier list video, I had the haven't played enough category. I'm happy to say it's not here anymore because I feel like I've played all of these games for an adequate amount of time enough to have an opinion on this stuff. So there's no need to put games and haven't played enough because I have played some games for a long time, some for not that long. And I'll talk about it if I didn't play a lot of it, but I'll get to it when I get to it, okay? As I mentioned in my last year's video, this whole idea was inspired by Snapscube. She did a tier list video of the game she played in 2021, and I'm doing it here, and that's pretty fun. So with that, let me just get started with Killing Floor 2, just like a, like a zombie survivor game, I suppose. I played it with friends, really. I never played it by myself, and we played it for a couple of hours. And I feel like they liked it a lot more than I did. Uh, gathering my thoughts on it, I... Because, again, I played it, well, 11 months ago. I don't remember exactly everything of what I did play. But I remember thinking it was just a fun time with friends. It's, it's just like a round wave. You survive for a set amount of rounds, I believe, and then you can beat the game or not beat the game. Well, honestly, like, again, I played it for a, a, lot, of, a lot of hours. But thinking back on it now, I don't remember next to anything. I remember having fun, but feeling like, like it wasn't properly... It didn't feel that satisfying playing the game. Something about how it felt, well, shooting zombies or uh, surviving in this game, felt very uh, artificial, I suppose. I don't really have a better word for it. And again, I don't really remember much of this game, which, it kind, of, which kind of speaks to what I felt about it. It's just that I didn't really care for it. Not that I didn't like it, I, I don't think I had that bad a time playing it, but I don't think I'll go back to this game. I do have the physical copy behind me there. I do have the list, if you can see there, is all the games that I have physically that I played this year. Just a nice little background extra that I like to do, that I like to have here. So with all that being said, I don't have anything else to say. I'm going to say Killing Floor is going to go in B category there, because I did like it. I'm not interested in playing any more of it, but I kind of had fun with it but not enough to make me play it ever again. Next up here is Chivalry 2. So Chivalry 2 is just like, um, I think that I, well, I made the joke to my friends. It's probably not original, but I made it like it's Battlefield 1342. Like you're just in medieval times. It's like, uh, it can be up to like uh, 32 players or 60 players in one match. And you just, well, get to an objective, do an objective, everything like that. This game is actually, I kind of have a uh, similar thoughts on Killing Floor 2. My friends enjoy it. I f don't enjoy it as much. The combat and everything I'm, not too big a fan of. I feel like Chivalry 2's whole selling point is how the combat is because it's very unique, I would say. But that doesn't really make it fun for me. I maybe it's a maybe it's a me thing, right? Maybe I'm just bad at the game. I <laughs> let me change that. I am bad at this game. Is it my fault I'm bad at the game or is it like just the mechanics are so convoluted or even like nothing feels right when I'm playing the game? You can do different swings, you can throw your weapons, you can use different weapons. Bow and arrow, shield, arrows, spears. All that stuff, but I never have fun playing it. One, the combat feels very slow. I, I guess realistic, but I, there are certain points you don't want to care about realism in games. And second one is just, I suck at the game. I suck, and the other players who play it are way better than me. And like I can't really have that much fun with that. Now... Are there any good points for this game? Uh, just fun with friends. Yeah, that's all I have, really. Like, I... Yeah, I don't really like this game. I'll be honest. I play with friends because my friends like playing it, and I can have fun with it, but... I just... It's not that fun for me, you know? Chivalry 2 is going to go in B category. Uh, even after saying all that, I still, like, will play with friends when they suggest it. I've suggested it a couple of times. I can have fun with this stuff. But it's not something that I see myself wanting to play all the time. It's really not for me. I'm going to put it below Killing Floor 2 as well. I think... Actually, no, I'll put it above Killing Floor 2. Because, I mean, we still play Chivalry 2. We just played it, like, last week or, like last week or something. So we still play it. Killing Floor 2 we haven't touched in months. So that's fine. Next game. 
is the lovely, lovely, lovely Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I'm putting it in D category already. This is one of my only games that I streamed this year. I think I streamed approximately like, <laughs> like five times this year. But two of those streams were of Security Breach. And I don't like this game. Now, I, I don't know if anything that I can say is that like innovative. It's just not fun, man. I played it for maybe five hours on stream. And it kind of feels like the developers just made too big a project. Again, this is nothing original that I'm saying. But for me, like, the horror aspect of the game is gone. I don't feel any sense of dread. Only There's only jump scares remaining, which... You look back at, like, the very first FNAF game, and that is... I would say is, is scary. Like, the whole atmosphere and stuff is kind of cool. And they have trouble keeping that, and sometimes they bring it back with horror elements are very good, like in FNAF 4, I really liked 4. But then they kind of lose it, like with FNAF 2 and, um... Like, Sister Location, I suppose. I don't really care about Sister Location. But is that what you want to hear? No, you want to hear what I think about Security Breach. Security Breach has lost all its horror aspects, I feel. The only part that I remember having... Uh, dread with was the like the ball pit with the sun and moon guy and that was um kind of scary but i've already seen that beforehand it's a scripted event it doesn't really matter but then it just comes down to the game isn't optimized for ps5 i played the ps5 version didn't play it on pc there are moments where you have to use the security camera feature to keep out the animatronics and playing on ps5 is dreadful like it, it sucks it sucks it's terrible but then the other method of just like it's just wandering around empty halls for hours on end, not knowing where to actually go. If you've seen my streams or highlights, you know that I got lost a lot of the time in this game because there's no actual indicator of where you're meant to go next. I suppose there is, and I could just be bad at the game. But also, I feel like it falls on the game designers that I didn't really understand where to go, right? Do I have anything else to say? It's an open world game. Open world, I suppose. It's, but it just doesn't, it's just not fun at all, man. D category. FNAF Security Breach is D. I don't like this game. This is not fun for me. Now we're getting into the stuff that I play whenever I get the chance to. And that here is Fire Emblem Engage. This came out back in January or something, right? This game, I was pretty hyped up for. On, on, on the way to release, people were kind of shitting on the game already. Like the art style or the graphics of the game didn't look that good. I didn't see where they were coming from. Because I played this game. I had such a fun time playing this game. Not only one of the most fun Fire Emblem games to play. It's also one of the most artistically innovative games that they've had. I loved the actual like art style of the game. I loved the way that everything looked. I I kind of liked the, um, the character design. Not as strongly as I felt about just the atmosphere of the game. And if you've seen... And again, I mentioned this in like one of my videos, but I bought the Fire Emblem Engage Collector's Edition which has an art book in it. And that art book like shows some really awesome concept art and just some really awesome art in general. This has got such a lovely art style to it. I really like it. So for that, I'm going to put it in A. Why wouldn't I put it in S though? I've notoriously have put Fire Emblem games in S before. Well, as you might be aware, Fire Emblem Engage has got probably one of the shittest stories in any Fire Emblem game. It sucks so much. Not so much. Like, I can... Like, I I, 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 I believe the story sucks in this game. Like, I really don't care. But the biggest crime to me is how shit the characters are. I really don't like these characters at all. They're so one note. And just so in love with the Divine Dragon. That they have no personality of their own. And every, any personality that they have is just, I like this specific thing, and I don't like much else. And then the next guy that comes along is, I like this specific thing, and nothing else. And it's just that for 30 hours. I'm so sick of it. I don't think I liked any of the characters in this game. I can't remember one. I remember Rosado, the guy who was into into girly things. That was like my favorite character. I, li I remember... um. Albert, was that his name? I don't remember his name. I don't remember any of their names. Oh my god. It's like that that's just what I tell you. That's just what tells you. That's what to me that speaks to you. That speaks to me how terrible these characters are, that I don't remember any of their names. But I remember the actual concept of how they would get introduced. You'd visit like some new area, 
and there will be the main person who is like at, at at the very least somewhat relevant to the story and then they've got two companions who mean nothing and that's that's the same that's the same mixture that's the same, <laughs> that's the same concept for like 30 hours and it just bored me to death i still finish this game and again this is one of the best fire emblem games honestly just the gameplay alone i feel like you i feel like people get into fire emblem and people really keep on playing fire emblem for the gameplay because it is very interesting methodical but like man you can have the gameplay be as fun as you like but when the story and characters are this nothing like i still had a very good time with this game and i did play the dlc that came out um i just have nothing about the dlc man like the first three plots were just new characters you could pick up which i did pick up and like cool but i didn't really care it was whatever the fourth DLC is an actual like side story, and that was um, <laughs> uh, it's set in a different world. I think I kind of liked it, I guess, but like, man, don't remember. Is that all I have to say? Yeah, that's all I have to say. Very awesome Fire Emblem game to play. The story I don't remember much. The characters, some of the worst I've ever seen. Most one note, one sided characters I've ever seen. 2D as fuck. I don't care. But still, it's A. It's, it's Fire Emblem. Like, I really like Fire Emblem. It's, it's A. Next game we have is DayZ. This is the first time I ever played DayZ. I know a lot about the game, though. I used to watch a lot of YouTubers play DayZ back when I was in, like, high school. Like, uh, when I was 12, 13, 14, whatever. I was really interested in this game because it looked just like a ton of fun you can have with your friends. But I never had a PC at the time. But the game, like, at some point came out on PS4 and Xbox. I have the Xbox edition over there because I played it on PS4 with all of my friends. Here's what I'm going to tell you, okay? I have played this game for a long time. And we got very into it when we're all together. Once everybody is together in this game, it is some of the most fun we have ever played, right? The mo some of the most fun we've ever had. <sighs> but... The entire process of leading up to getting to your friends, some of the most fucking despicable shit I've ever gone through. Playing this game is actually torture. I fucking hate this game. Daisy is such a weird one. It's like everything before getting to your friends and having fun with your friends is 0 out of 10. The most insane shit. It sucks so bad. The game's mechanics, its physics, its atmosphere, is such horse shit. I don't give a single fuck about the map of this game. The actual playing it... So, the game is empty, right? The servers are empty. I, I, I think, again, I played on PS4. I don't know if it's crossplay. Maybe there aren't a lot of people playing on PS4. But, in my experience... There's never anyone in the servers. There's also just no zombies around. Maybe there's like one in a town. A couple in a town, maybe. It's so boring. And where we're in a voice call together, trying to figure out where we all are, that's so annoying. It's not realistic, which can be very immersive. It's just stupid. <laughs> we took so long trying to find each other in a game, and then we'd always die, and then we'd just have to fucking wait. And when it's night time, we don't even bother. We just stay in the house because it is actually pitch dark. Pitch black dark. We can't see a damn thing, so we just wait. This game is just waiting. And then walking to somewhere. And you hope that you're going in the same direction as your friend is. It takes so long to actually get anything going in this game. That by the time you meet up and you're finally all together. It's just not worth it. Again, when we get together and have... And, like, all walk around together, loot a whole town each other with each other, and on the off chance we come across a player and we try to take him out. It's fucking amazing how fun that is. But you got to ask yourself, is it worth it to sift through shit for 45 minutes to have some really good fun for half an hour until the server shuts down or you die? In my opinion, no. It's not worth it. It can be very fun, but I fucking hate this game, and it's not worth it. D. Below FNAF. 
I want to play this again though. <laughs> I played it back in uh, February or uh, March, and we never played it again for we played it for like maybe a solid two weeks. Again, very fun when we're together, but we never played it again. I was telling my friends, I kind of want to play it again. I kind of want to see now that we kind of know a bit more if we can be more efficient and having fun. You know what I mean? Like get meet up together quicker and just have more fun quicker like that. And also try and survive for longer. That could be good. I want to see if we can do it again. I don't know if I will regret trying that, but I just kind of want to see where that goes. All right, next game is Persona 4 Golden. S, what do you think? Persona 4 Gold is my favorite game of all time. I've said it in that Persona video I made that one time. Oh, man. I played this again because it came out on all the platforms in February, I think. I was too busy playing Fire Emblem, so I chose to play Fire Emblem first and then play this. Oh, right. No, no, no. Persona 4 Golden and Fire Emblem Engage came out on the same day. Right. I, th I think. I think that's... I think that's right. Such a wild day for me. I remember thinking for so long, oh, shit, should I play Engage first or, or Persona 4 again? I chose Fire Emblem first and then Persona 4 Golden. And, like, I just, I just love Persona 4 Golden, man. Let me run you through it, okay? Because I don't know if you've seen my Persona video. I think you should watch it. It's I'm one of my favorite. It's my favorite video of all time. I love Persona as a series already. The gameplay it can be very fun, but it's, you mainly play it for the story and the characters. The story in Persona Four, it's one of the weaker ones compared to mainline Persona games. It's still amazing. I still love it so much, but compared to Three and Five, I I, I think those ones are better stories than this one. But just the second you get into the new town that you're transferred in, you feel right at home. And you're like, oh, I'm going to love this. You get greeted by Nanako and Dojima, and you already love them. Then you spend one day in school. You meet up with Chie and Yosuke and Yukiko. I love them all. And the game keeps you keeps keeps you going with everything. You meet Kanji, you meet Risa, you meet Naoto. Naoto, best character. You meet them all, and you love it so much. And you just feel right at home. And even when you exit high school, the music in this game is while I don't think it is the best soundtrack in the whole game, it's definitely the most atmospherical. It definitely fits the vibe of Persona 4 Golden, like, the best. It just, it's, it makes you feel right at home. And I've said all of this before. I don't know how much I should repeat, but I, like, I, this is my favorite game of all time. It makes you feel so, like, so welcome. It makes you feel so at home. And it helps that the characters and story and gameplay are so good. As for, like, the re-release aspect, I mean, it released on Switch. I played it all throughout Switch. And it feels perfect on there. Like, the, uh, War Golden came out on PS Vita, so it feels right at home being on a portable console. I wish there was a physical edition of this that came out. As of streaming and then uh, uploading, the only physical edition is the limited run games thing in America, which, like, is kind of cringe, honestly. I would have got it if it had the Australian version, but it's only going to be the American version. And, like, listen, I already have it on PS Vita here, and that already cost me, like, 120 bucks. Like, I don't need to buy it again until it releases in Australia. Then I will definitely buy it, because fucking hell, favorite game of all time. I can have physical edition on Switch. Oh, hell yeah. That's going to be epic. The next game that I played is Gravity Rush. I've heard a lot of good things about this game, uh, specifically from Scott the Woz. I, I, I watched his um video on this game, and I thought that was pretty cool. But, uh, hmm. Let me think back, because I did actually try to play this game a couple of years back, and I only got an hour or two into it, and I dropped it. Very unfortunate, because this year, I did pick up the game, and I actually finished this game, and I got all the trophies in this game. I 100%ed it. And what do I say about this game? Is It's S. I love this game so much. It's such a nice little passion project of... Like, so many individuals making this thing go together and make it work so well. Like, what's the weakest aspect about this game? Not what's bad about this, because I don't think there is anything bad about it. It's just, what is the weakest aspect of Gravity Rush? I can't tell you. I think it might be either the story or the characters. Mainly just because I don't really remember the story. I, I don't remember that much about it. The characters, I mean, like, I really like Cat. And the guy, <laughs> the, the guy character, I forgot his name, fuck, but I thought he was cool. Play like 10 minutes of this and you're going to be hooked. Unless if it was me three years ago in which I wasn't hooked and I dropped it in an hour or two. But play this game and stick with it. And this game is such a, it, it's one of those ones where it's like, 
I've got nothing bad to say about this game. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's like... I could say nothing's bad about the game. Just that I forgot the story. Might just be, might just be my part. I might just be a bad rememberer. Might have short... Not that good memory. Whatever you'd call it. But dude, the gameplay is so fun. Do you know what Gravity Rush is? You press a button and gravity goes. And you just, like, you move in one spot or another. And you depict how gravity works. And that works so well. And it just, it's so fluid, and you don't get confused on what the fuck you're doing, which is very hard to do for a gravity-based game. Maybe in the first hour or two, I was confused, and I felt disoriented. But once you get used to it, it just clicks so good. You learn to be, like, such a pro at this, and it, it, it just feels so good to do. And then, the whole, like, art style of the game, taking it straight out of a comic book and stuff like that, dude, it just works so well. Which also, like... This game is also like very um efficient in how it's how it uses itself. Is that a how the what the fuck did I just say there? There's a scene in the game where you're going down a giant um like a tree trunk, I think. And there's no loading times. But you you keep on going for like so long. They go like, "Oh my god, how big is this space?" And that's that's certainly something for one thing. But two, that was on the PlayStation Vita. This game originally came out on the PS Vita. I don't know if it operated the exact same way as it did on PS4, but that whole aspect of I was flying for maybe just a solid eight minutes with no loading screen, and I was constantly going. And I was like, holy shit, this is so expansive. How the fuck did they fit this on a PS Vita? And that's something to tip your hat off to. This game was amazing. I would definitely want to play it again sometime. It's like, it's a great game. Again, sadly, I will put a below Persona 4 Golden, but Gravity Rush is so fucking good. Now, what did I think of Gravity Rush 2? Well, here's the thing. I didn't play that much of Gravity Rush 2. It's a classic Psychonauts situation, like last year. Finished Psychonauts 1, I played it. Played Psychonauts 2, I didn't play that much of it. Except I played more of Gravity Rush 2. I played maybe 4 or 5 hours of it. I'm going to put it in A, because uh, nothing really hooked me on this one. It's the same as Gravity Rush 1, which is awesome. But made for PlayStation 4. Which is good, but also, I don't think they had that, uh... I don't think they did that good of a job optimizing this game for PS4. While I think the gameplay is probably better than Gravity Rush 1. And the game looks a lot better. The characters are pretty cool. Story is fine. Although it feels like there was a game in between Gravity Rush 1 and 2. Because a lot happens uh, in between those two games. Which I was kind of confused about. But, like, it's fine. Whatever. Gravity Rush 2 felt so much slower... In comparison, it felt like it was at a lower frame rate than normal. Not even 30 frames. It felt like um, it felt like Breath of the Wild. You know, it was like really good, but it didn't feel like it ran stable, which like really turned me off of this game. And that's unfortunate because again, I did still really like playing it. If your game isn't optimized for even like a much better console, much bigger console, like what's the point? I can definitely say I will finish this game at one point. I will finish this game at some point, but while I did enjoy the gameplay and the story and the characters and like every aspect of it, just the fact that it doesn't run that well really turned me off of the game, which sucks. But I would definitely play it again at one point, and I will probably enjoy it a lot better. It's just, I got turned off of trying to play the game. Maybe because I just dove straight from Gravity Rush 1 to 2. Maybe I was overdosing on that a bit. I don't know. There could have been many aspects as to why I didn't finish this game, but basically, I think it's a great game, but not optimized for PS4, and I will finish it at some point. I just didn't play a lot of it. Moving on. Battlefield 2042. Uh, C, I guess. I'll be honest, we didn't play this for long. We played the beta back when it was in beta, and we thought it was really good. Then the full game came out, and me and my friends, we all, or most of us, bought it at day one. And I never actually played it at day one, so I just wasted 90 bucks there. But we finally did play it this year. I think it was... um free on PS Plus for one month or something, so we all managed to get it, and we played a couple of games. Man, we just don't care, huh? We just really don't care about this game. Which is so weird, because the beta was so good, and the gameplay trailers were all good, but at the end of the day, man, we played it, we just, man, we just really didn't care. Maybe it's to do with, like, there's no, there's no, moi, there's no, whoa, there's no, <laughs> none of that to the game. No, it doesn't feel special at all. I get that it's, Set in futuristic time, and there are all these things that can happen. It's like the biggest maps they've had, and more players than ever. 
but like who gives a shit if you can't make the gameplay as fun as you're hyping it up to be the gameplay like down to its core i suppose is fun but may maybe it was an aspect of we were expecting too much of this game to have a weather shit happen every match and to have crazy shit happen but we play it and it's just normal battlefield but the maps are bigger so you don't see players as often and like that's kind of boring so yikes c tier that's all i have to say resident evil 4 the remake uh this is the other game that i streamed this year i'm gonna put it in s tier i mean yeah like what do you want resident evil 4 is already a great game but you remake it i was a bit skeptical on it but Dude, this is probably like, this is the definitive edition now, right? People prefer this one much more to the re to the original one. Uh, my only gripe is that I didn't finish it. Again, I only streamed it twice and I never finished it. Which sucks, because I did actually play the original Resi 4, maybe two, three years ago, and I loved it. And I wanted to finish this game, but I was one of those ones that was like, um... I was thinking to myself, I would only play this if I was streaming it. And I streamed it twice, and I was like, no, nah, I'll play it, and when I play it, I'll stream it. But I just never streamed again, so I never played it again, so I don't know... I never finished it, I never played the DLC that came out for it. What a shame, because of what I played, which again was maybe 5-6 hours, this is so fun, and so horrific too. Like already the original Resi 4 felt so good, and like you understand why the gameplay is the way it is. With this they modernized it so much, but they didn't make it feel like a different game. Which isn't even a bad thing, because Resident Evil 2 is a remake and it feels like an entirely different game. But, like, who the fuck wants to play those original ones? But, the point is that, like, you didn't need to do that big of a change with this game, because 4 already felt amazing to play. But they just made everything feel better of where it might have lacked. Which, where did it even lack? You know? Maybe they gave more characters more screen time, like Luis. Apparently, Luis gets more screen time, which is cool. I don't know. I didn't play it for that long. Wish I could say more. Wish I played more. But I didn't play anymore. But S, because again, I already, I already understand. Like, I play the first, <laughs> like, I play the first, like, hour, and I'm like, okay. Uh, people are going to like this one. And they did, which is awesome, because I like Resi 4. Now, what is this next up here? Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates is the one on the 3DS where they made it into two different games. And then a third game later down the line, but, like, who cares? Uh, specifically, I played the Conquest storyline. It's the one where I think you stay with the family that you, re you were grown up in. And then you fight the soul... What the fuck, dude? I can't remember. Um, anyway, listen, listen, listen. Fire Emblem Fates, apparently people didn't like as much as Awakening, which I can understand. I think Fates has the best story. Is that right? Yeah, I think I think Fates has the best story. I really liked it, man. I, 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 I might be uh, in the minority on this one, but Fates felt so good, dude. It was, I, I loved that game. Like, I'll put it here. Like, S. Yeah, below Resi 4. Um, uh, yeah. I think I'll put Resi 4 above Gravity Rush. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Fates, uh, I love the story. The characters are fine. Again, I have a real problem remembering Fire Emblem characters, if they're not from Three Houses. Uh, and the gameplay is Fire Emblem. Like, what do you expect? I think they made a bit of a couple of changes in this one, which was fine. I, I don't remember, man. Fire Emblem games just wash over me. I love those games, but, like, I play them and I love them, and then I don't remember anything about them. Like, I remember when I played Awakening. Awakening was amazing. Do I remember anything about it? No. Three Hopes, I loved it. I remember a bit, but no, I don't remember much of it. Fates, I don't remember a goddamn thing. But I loved it. More than Engage. Definitely more than Engage. The gameplay... Listen, Engage had the better gameplay. But the gameplay was already really good to begin with. It's like upgrading a 9 out of 10. And then with the story, like Fire Emblem's <laughs> Engage's story, maybe a 3 out of 10. And Fate's story is 8 out of 10. Which is the more impactful one, right? Am I making sense? The gameplay isn't as good as Engage, but that doesn't matter because the gameplay is already good. Fates' story is better than Engage's, and Engage's story was horse shit, so that's good. Fire Emblem games are amazing, and play them, please. I play them, and I won't remember a goddamn thing after I play them. I really don't know why. It's a problem with me, but... I remember I really liked the game. I'll put it in S tier, because I love Fire Emblem. Okay, Risk of Rain 2. Uh, granted, I have played this so much uh, before, even this year. It's one of those comfort games for me right now. Like... It's a uh, roguelike, I, I suppose? I really don't know what a roguelike is, but I think Risk of Rain 2 is like that. Which, um, I got it because my friends had it, and we played it, and we really liked it. And now it's really just me who plays it. I haven't played it in a while, but I do play it from time to time, and I can just have so much joy. I have so much joy playing this, and I, it's just so comforting to me. It can get very intense, and I normally don't even finish it. I just play a run, and then I just force quit the game because I get bored 
But when I play it, I just feel so comforted. It's just such a good game for me. I don't have any more experience with Risk of Rain though. I never played the first one. I don't know if I will because apparently it's a 2D one. And which I will talk about later. But I think 2D platformers. Platformers at least of 2D variety. Just not my thing. Risk of Rain 2 is very good. And I really like it. And I will put it in A. And I will put it above Gravity Rush 2. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, we got a big one. Dead Island 2. Oh, wait. It's not a big one because this game fucking wasn't finished. It feels that way at least. Let me kind of explain. So Dead Island 1 is one of my favorites. I don't know if I would still call it like one of my favorite games of all time. But as a kid, I loved Dead Island 1 so much. And I was so excited for Dead Island 2 to come out whenever it was going to come out. It finally came out. And man, they were kind of fucked from the beginning. People expected too much already. Like you make us wait for 15 years. And this is what you give us. Granted, game looks great. Yeah, the gore system, pretty cool. While I didn't have a problem with it while I was playing, after the game and after reading uh, or watching some people's reviews videos on this stuff, the combat is fucking like a, but a bit of a yikes, man. But what's my biggest gripe with this game? It's the story and how it ends. Let me tell you how it ends. It's not going to be a spoiler. It ends on a cliffhanger, and such a door, such a boring cliffhanger too, which makes me feel like the game wasn't finished, because it's such a nothing cliffhanger, like, why did you do that? It feels like you just forgot about so many plot points in the game, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck it, it ships in next week, it ships next week, let's just send it like that, and then add the story as DLC, which I don't know if they have finished the story in DLC. I do have the season pass, I think it came with the collector's edition, because I have the collector's edition, in that wardrobe behind me. But I never played any more once I finished the story of this game. I didn't even go back to try and get all the trophies, man. Just didn't care that much. I mean, I'm still happy this came out. And I hope if this game sold well that we can get... Uh, that we can get a better better game next. But for now, man, Dead Island 2, I'm going to put in, uh, put in C. Above Battlefield 2042. It's kind of a fun game. Ruined by shit story and nothing characters. And combat too. That's kind of cringe. Next up is Persona 3 Portable. Um, I have a lot to say about it. But I'll be honest, like... I played it this year because, again, it came out on Switch. I didn't finish it on Switch, though. I didn't finish the game. I played only maybe 2-3 uh, hours this time. And while I have finished the game, again, I finished it because of that one video I did. My thoughts on Portable is I'm more of a... I'm more of a Persona 3 Fez guy. I'll take not being able to control my party members for a more immersive experience. The only advantages that Persona 3 Portable has to Persona 3 Fez is that with this one, you can control your party members and you can play in a different story. Which, uh, for people who might not know, Persona 3 came out. It's a great game. They made a remaster, I suppose, Persona 3 Fez. Basically, just the same game, but you couldn't control your party members in both of those games, which is a big oversight. But that Fez brought out um, an epilogue story and just some more social links, like with Igus, which, by the way, Igus, best character in the Persona series. But then uh, a couple of years later, they released Persona 3 Portable for the PSP, which is very different because you can now control your party members and they give you a brand new story to play as a, as a female main character instead of a male main character. But it's on a, it's on a PSP, so... There are going to be some downgrades, specifically how the story is presented, because it's now like a visual novel, instead of Persona 3 and 3 Fez having 3D visual cutscenes. Which, again, I'll weigh up my pros and cons. I'm more of a Fez guy. I'll take the better story and the epilogue over a uh, woman character and controlling party members, because controlling party members is fine in Fez. I don't like it, and I definitely don't prefer it, but I can get over it. And the epilogue... Uh, well, it, it kind of sucks playing it, but it's just the story is really nice. Portable, what do you have? You can control your party members, which is fine. I never really cared about not being able to control them in the first place. And then uh, you can play as the female main character, which, um, I mean, like, it's good. I kind of still prefer the male main character story. I don't think I, I... You can't really have a preference because they're not that different. Not in my opinion, at least. It's just that, like, I think it's just because I played the male main character first, and female main character is, like, fine. Again, like, I weigh up the pros and cons. I'm more of a Fez guy. What do I think of Persona 3 Portable? It's A. A Persona game not in S tier. It's shocking. But, like, 
They had to release this one, they couldn't release Fez. Man, I'll put it there, right below Fire Emblem Engage. And also, like, the Switch port is fine. Apparently, people had a lot of, um, issues with it, like, the audio, the audio sucked on it, and, uh, like, the upscaling didn't look that good. I played it when it was updated, so I don't know if I, so I didn't really catch any of, um, like, what wasn't good with it. I just kind of had a fun time. If it was Fez re-released, I will put it in S tier. But again, I'm more of a Fez guy myself, not portable. But portable is still a good game. It's just that I prefer Fez. Astral Chain is the next one that I have here. It's a Platinum Games game. Who made Bayonetta and uh, something else, I don't remember. This game, uh, I don't care. <laughs> so I played it for a couple hours and it didn't grab me. I gave it more of a shot than I thought I would. And I guess I can have fun with it, but I really just don't care, honestly. Story is whatever, characters, I kind of like the character design, but I don't really remember any of the names. And the combat, I, I would say it's fun, but it just it didn't grab me. Boom, C. Next up, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. This one was in last year's tier list, but I really only played like 20 minutes of it when, um, when I had it in that tier list then. I have now since played a couple more hours. I still haven't beaten it, but I have played... About, uh, two worlds? I think maybe three? I still never played Bowser's Fury. But I have played enough to not have it in haven't played enough category anymore. I will put it in A. Like, uh, right, um... Right there. Because I really enjoyed playing it. Like, dude, the, the level design is really great in that game. While nothing kept me wanting to play this game, I still very much enjoyed it, man. It's like very tight platforming. And I like that. I like that in a game. Next, Wii Sports. I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest why this game's here. I just played it to get footage for that um, game collecting video that I made. And I was like, fuck it, it's a short ass game. I'll just play all the game modes in it. So I just played all the game modes. And I mean, like, this game's so old that I really have nothing new to say. It's just that it's a fun game, even by yourself. I have played it by myself. I had quite a lot of fun with it. As a kid, I played, the, I played it to death. And uh, that was also very fun. Playing it now? Yeah, it's fun. Like, you know, I'll put it, uh, I'll put it there, above Chivalry. Put it in B tier. I feel like that's, that's fine, right? Would I put it in A? I don't know. The next game in this list is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I have beat this game. I've put a hundred hours into it, I think. And, like, it's, um, I have nothing else to say that is new. Of my own experience, I played this for uh, so long. I love this game. Is that shocking? No, it's not. But let me tell you why I love this game. While I'm not the most creative person in playing video games, I really just stick to the script of what they want me to do. Tears of the Kingdom really made me feel like I had a say in how things went. This was the most free like experience I've ever had playing a game because the whole thing of Breath of the Wild coming out was they were like you can complete these quests however you want you can beat these dungeons however you want you can finish the game whenever you want I loved that but I very clearly was like yeah but let me go do the four divine beasts first and then I'll come back to you with Ganondorf which was fine again I love Breath of the Wild it's just I never really felt that creative playing it I just stuck to the script of beat enemies I never got um, innovative with how I did anything. Tears of the Kingdom perfected what Breath of the Wild tried to do. And let me tell you my main reason why I believe that. Breath of the Wild, while being a very open game, there are moments where you are stuck to that one particular space. And I mean that as in, you can fast travel anywhere, you walk in somewhere, you can just walk right out whenever you want. And there are like no loading screens. You can walk from one end of the map to the other end of the map without a loading screen in sight. And you just walk and there's nothing stopping you from doing that. There are obstacles and stuff, but you can overcome them. It's not hard. You can't do that yet. Do it later. Except when you're doing Divine Beasts. When you're doing Dungeons. Or like, yeah, well, specifically the Divine Beasts. You're in there and you have to watch a loading screen to leave like with death mountain like if you're doing um that bit before you get to the lizard monster varudania i think that was the one you're very clearly leaving one scene and entering the next which is just the volcano if you try to leave 
you can't just walk off and do something else. You are taken from a different plane where the gameplay aspect changes. Does that make sense? I, it's all in my head, and I'm trying to make it make sense. Like, it doesn't feel free in that aspect, because if you're doing Varadana, you can't just fuck off and do something else. Before you get to that point, it's a loading screen, and it changes, like, the aspect of it, right? With Tears of the Kingdom, they got rid of that. You can start a dungeon and leave whenever you want. You can solve a puzzle really however you want. And that's what I did. I learned some really cool and innovative techniques and by myself that I figured out by myself. I didn't look at a goddamn thing when this game was coming out. While you're on your way to do any um, of the temples, or even when you're in a temple, you can just walk out and you can just go to something else in the middle of that. With Breath of the Wild, there were only some, maybe only two instances in Hyrule Castle and that Death Mountain part where you're in there, and you can't just walk out, you have to go through a loading screen first. With this game, dude, I couldn't even... You had to figure out how to get to Hyrule Castle. And once you did, you could just leave whenever you wanted. You didn't need to watch a loading screen before you could walk from one place to another. You could just go there whenever. And I loved that. In... In... Elden... What the fuck's the place? <laughs> the place where Death Mountain's at. You could just walk up to the mountain at any point. You didn't have to stop and load something, and then you could do it again. The only time it did that was when you were just skydiving and it went too fast and it literally had to load what you were about to do. But that was, that's just the Switch's fault. That's fine, whatever. You can just, like, you can just go from one place to the other without a loading screen, but in its entirety. There are no instances where it's like, okay, stop for a second. I need to do something different for you before you can do anything. Please tell me that makes sense. <laughs> that was my biggest thing with Tears of the Kingdom was like, wow. I have complete control over what I can do. Breath of the Wild made you think that, and for 98% of the game, you can do that. But there are just those tiny things where you're like, oh no, I'm very clearly not allowed to do this right here. Like with Death Mountain, I'm not allowed to just walk away. Hyrule Castle, I'm not allowed to just walk out of the gate. I have to load it first, and then I can do the rest of the map. Tears of the Kingdom, you can just do whatever. But like, that's enough about the open world stuff, okay? You, you, I get, you have to understand what I mean now, right? You can do whatever you want, however you want. They perfected that model here. What else can I say about it? The story is like good, and I kind of prefer it over the first one. But these games, uh, story is not... Story is an afterthought with these ones. The gameplay I liked a lot more here as well. The new abilities that you can do, I prefer over Breath of the Wilds. The only part where I faltered, or just like didn't like, get too into, was trying to make creations, like, with Ultra Hand and stuff like that. I never got too in-depth with that stuff. I just made what I needed to, and I didn't get that much more creative with it. Again, my creativity went to just trying to complete quests in the most stupid way possible, which I had a lot of fun doing. Let's talk about the Sky Islands. Don't give a shit. <laughs> I've been talking about this game for so long, and, like, 10 minutes was just trying to, uh, trying to say how I like how free this game is. But let's talk about the new stuff, okay? Sky Islands are pretty cool, but that's when you start to notice, oh, it's a video game. Because they copy and paste it, like, it, like the assets and stuff like that. And the, the uh, whole design of the Sky Islands are fine, but you've seen one, you've seen them all. Except for the ones with the low gravity, I really like those parts. That was very, just very fun for me. But the other part is the depths, and I really like the depths. I thought they were very spooky, and I really like them a lot. I think those are my biggest takeaways from that game. I love it. Like, can I give much of a case to why Tears of the Kingdom is a great game? No. You should know already. It's a great game. Play it, please. If you haven't already. You probably have played it, though. I will put it here. Persona 4 Golden is still my favorite game of all time. And I still like that more than Tears of the Kingdom. But listen, man. Persona 4 Golden shouldn't even be here, alright? I've already played it to death. But I played it this year, so fuck it, it's here. But I will put <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom above it, alright? My next three is the Pikmin line. I'll get to Pikmin 3 later, though. So, first off, I played uh, Pikmin 1. It re-released for the Switch, and I was fucking ecstatic about it. It shadow dropped itself. It dropped the same day that it was announced, and I loved that. The only thing I don't love was that they were like, and the physical edition will come three months later. Why? I was just thinking to myself, man, should I play this digitally, like, immediately, or should I wait for that physical edition? I chose to buy it digitally first, because it came at day one. I bought one plus two. I have two here as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I played the Switch version of Pikmin 1. What are my thoughts on Pikmin 1 
like already, right? Well, I never really... I definitely liked the game. I love Pikmin to death. But I never really held it in that higher regard. I would have said it was my lowest rated Pikmin game. But playing this on the Switch... Dude, I fell in love with it again. It's something about it, man. It's such a short and concise game, which means it just excels. They, they spent more time developing just what they have, which wasn't a lot, but they made every aspect the best that they could. The atmosphere of Pikmin 1 is probably my favorite of the four games. I never played Hair Pikmin, by the way. I never played that one. The whole structure of how the game's played is very basic for the time, but it just works, all right? Music in this game, I think, is my favorite favorite soundtrack i think i don't the pikmin music kind of blends together for me but i really like the first game's atmosphere and how the music delivered with the atmosphere story is fine oldemar is probably my favorite nintendo character uh the pikmin types are fine again like this is i'm talking about a 20 year old game all right but as it comes to a re-release the biggest hurdle that everyone knows for pikmin is how do you make the game feel good after the wii remote and nunchuck gameplay from the Wii re-release of the games. Well, let me tell you, they did the best they could, okay? I feel like this method works a lot for the time, and it definitely makes it so if they ever need to re-release this game again, it'll be a lot easier now, because they've already done the work. And I feel like this is the best it's going to get without going back to Wii Remote Controls. But, like, let's just not go back to Wii Remote Controls, okay? It feels like it's outdated. Like, as a, as a, as a, as a general cause, like... If they released a console now that used a point of function, it would be weird. Pikmin controls, while I still prefer the Wii controls, nothing will beat that. This is the best he's going to get. Just having standard joystick controls, but they start using motion controls once you're holding either A or B. Works very well for the game. So this is probably the best it's going to get. And the game just looks great, okay? The HD upscaling looks a lot, looks really good in this game. Uh, and I mean, the art style really holds up. It already holds up because the art in this game was already incredible. But now looking at it in HD, it's very good. The only thing that I was a bit weird on was this game was pretty glitchy, which was weird for a Nintendo game. But like, it felt very buggy. Like, there are moments where the Pikmin AI got fucked up, and I know that the AI in the first game was already quite dumb, but in this one, like, the parts would not move correctly. Um, there's one treasure that's like above two things in Forest Naval. And you need to throw Pikmin up, then go up there, and then throw Pikmin up. When they brought it down, it got glitched for a second, and they couldn't move the part. It's tiny things like that that wasn't ever in the original games. But that was my only gripe, right? I don't have anything else bad about the game. It wasn't even bad, it was just confusing. And who knows, it has probably been patched out at this point. The game probably isn't as glitchy as it was when I played it day one. But that was what I saw. Nevertheless, Pikmin 1 is a fantastic game that people should... Uh, People should probably play this game first of the four mainline ones. Play this one first because it's the easiest, it's the smallest one. It's the most easy one to get behind. S. Above Gravity Rush, yeah. Now. Nintendo did the impossible. And they released Pikmin 4. <sighs> this one. This game. I've been waiting for it. For not the entire run. I wasn't that heavy into Pikmin until I finally played uh, Pikmin 3 back in 2018 or 2019. I always loved the series as a kid, but I never got fully invested until I played Pikmin 3 and I knew everything about video games, or I just knew more than as a child would and stuff like that. But I waited a long time for this game, and it finally came out. I, 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 dude, it's my favorite Pikmin game. This is my favorite Pikmin game now. It used to be Pikmin 2. Now it is this one. This is the ultimate Pikmin experience. They brought all the types back from the previous games, and they added two new ones. Two new ones are cool as well, Ice Pikmin and Glow Pikmin. It's very cool. The gameplay is so good, and again, the controls, this is as good as they're going to get. Like, without bringing back pointing controls, and they'll never do that, because it's not a good idea to bring back pointing controls in 2023 for a console, right? The The way that this game looks is so amazing, and Pikmin has always looked amazing, but dude, just having this in an HD console and building it for the Switch, ah, oh, so good. And like, the, the puzzles, the actual maps of the game and the little puzzles within those top notch dude i think this game kind of falters on having a lot of diverse environments because it's all just in a backyard which again looks very old looks very amazing but like pikmin 2 had different seasons 
as the maps. And that was awesome, and I loved the diversity in that one. But this one, it's all just grass, and like, again, it looks amazing, the best it's ever looked. But uh, can I see like one different environment, please? That's the only thing. Uh, like, the, the story... The story is the one thing that I had a problem with. Not even the story itself, because it's very... It's a Nintendo game. Stories aren't that convoluted. But it worked really well for this game. But it's... It's a new continuity, I suppose. It kind of ignores Pikmin 1, 2, and 3. And, like, this is just a retelling of the first one with a lot more shit added into it. I think that's the working theory, is that this is just a new timeline and stuff like that. Which I settled into very quickly. Uh, oh. The story itself is very good, but just like, did they have to just ignore the first three games and just pretend this was the first one again? That was that was my biggest gripe with it. Everything else surrounding this game is so good. While it's not open like Breath of the Wild, it's a very, it's a pretty linear game. Linear is fine. Linear or open world doesn't change how good or bad a game is. It just plays to its strengths. And Pikmin 4 played to its fucking strength, dude. The linear game design means they spent way more time focusing on how to make each section feel as perfect as it could be. Each map feels so good, each Pikmin type works so well, the game runs so amazingly, and all the maps, the actual, like, the way that they're all made, and the way that they changed how it works from Pikmin 3, 2, and 1, where now you can land in different spots of the same map, and now there are... Like, uh, what's the word? Like, the sparkly now? Like, you need to collect a set amount of things before moving on to the next place. All this stuff just works so well. The only gripe with this game is, again, the, the way that the story's made. But that's the only thing. I've waited for this game for, for however long, and they delivered in every aspect. I love this game. Only way to make this game perfect is release New Game Plus. Maybe some DLC, which I feel like they are doing, right? They should be doing that. I hope they do, at least. Because I want to play this game more. Have me play this game more. I already got every single treasure in the game. And I've tried replaying it, but it's I, I just can't now. Like, that's the only thing. I can't play this game again. Unless if they give me New Game Plus, because I have no my, none of my abilities, none of my Pikmin. Have New Game Plus, some DLC, something. Just any excuse to have me play this game again, please. My final rating, Pikmin 4. The fucking... There we go. It's better than Zelda. I like this more than Zelda. Boom. This one here. Top of the list right now. Boom. Pikmin 4 is now my favorite Pikmin game. But before 4 came out, Pikmin 2 was my favorite Pikmin game of all time. I'm about to blow your mind here. Pikmin 2 is now my least favorite Pikmin game. <laughs> I, I'll say it, man. Pikmin 2 is my least favorite one. I still love it to death. But... Right when I was done with 4, I, I started playing Pikmin 2 for the Switch. I didn't actually finish it then. I have now since gone back and finished it, like, r back in October or something like that. And again, the Switch port is the best it's going to be. Everything looks a lot better. It plays as good as it can. Only issue was there were a couple of glitches. Again, not as big as in Pik... Not as much as in Pikmin 1, but I did still notice some a bit of glitches here and there. But, uh, my god, this one's going to be a bit, like, fucking... Is this... Is this gonna, like, annoy people that I didn't put 2 above 1? Back when I was a kid, 2 was my favorite game of all time. And I love the new Pikmin types, and I love the map designs. But now, Pikmin 2, uh, playing it as an adult, playing it on the Switch, the game's just not fair. The game design is a lot harder than Pikmin 1, which isn't bad. But some of these caves that you play in, the new caves, by the way, I didn't say Pikmin 4 when I was talking about Pikmin 4. Cave system, I love it. Pikmin 2, it was pretty good. I prefer the caves in Pikmin 4 more than in Pikmin 2. Caves still are amazing in this game, but except for some, because suddenly it just gets so fucking hard out of nowhere. This is where the um, controls for the Switch port kind of falters. I remember a specific situation. I was trying to deal with the... The flying ones that drop rock bomb rocks on you. The motion sensor on the control can get a bit iffy when you're holding it for too long. So it got really difficult trying to hit that bug and I lost nearly all my Pikmin because of the motherfucker. And that didn't feel like it was my fault that I sucked at that game. It was the game's fault for not having the controls be that good. That was just one specific scenario that I remember. It is... 
still very good at the end of the day. But it, it's um looking on it now, I prefer one's simplicity and overall excellence. I prefer Pikmin 4's expanded gameplay, how big the game is while not feeling bloated. Pikmin 2 is probably, it can be longer than Pikmin 4, but not for a good reason. It's just because the, like, if you fuck up in a cave, you just start all over again. So it just bloats the game out because you will die. You will lose all your Pikmin out of fucking nowhere. Bomb rocks will just fall from the sky for no reason. Bowl blacks will come out and just kill you all over again. And, like, it's just not that fair. Like, that's my gripe. That's my negativity about Pikmin 2. With that being said, I still love Pikmin 2 so much. But weighing up the good parts and the bad parts, I think Pikmin 2 is my least favorite Pikmin game now. So that's why I'm putting it in A. So that's the Pikmin scenario. I'll talk more about Pikmin's when I get to Pikmin 3 later on. But for now, let me change subject over to N++. This was just a little game that I played for a tiny little bit. It's probably the game that I played for the least amount of time of all these games here. But I have played N+, or just N, I think it's just N+, on the Xbox 360 as a kid, and I loved it, and I played it here. And I really like it, but it never, it didn't grip me, it didn't want me to play. I didn't want to play that much of this game, just because I wasn't really, I wasn't really wanting to play it. I bought it for like a dollar, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll play it. It's just a indie platformer, 2D platformer, which I'll say. And here's what I'll say. I think I've found the genre of game that isn't for me. And that's 2D platformers. I can't stay in 2D platformers for that long. People will say RPGs are not for them. Fighting games aren't for them. I originally used to be like that. Fighting games were for me. But now I kind of turned around on them. But 2D platformers, I think, are uh, the ones that I don't like. The ones that I hate the most. Which sucks. Because even when I play a good one, I don't really like playing it for that long. So what I have to say, N++ is a good game. But I wasn't interested in playing it. Put it right there, in B. Next game is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a recent game that came out that my friend convinced me to play day one. Bit of backstory for us, actually. Me and my friends play a lot of Dead by Daylight. Not as much as we used to, but we would play it for hours on end. I think I have 100 hours in Dead by Daylight, I think. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Dead by Daylight, I will play it a lot. Texas Chainsaw came out, and we played it because it looked like Dead by Daylight. And now that we've played it, it's a not as good version of Dead by Daylight. <laughs> it's just like, uh, well, yeah, that's all I can say. Dude, this game is not fair. <laughs> like, we played it day one, and we've played it for a lot of a lot of hours, maybe like 40 plus hours. And we have a lot of fun in it, but man, you look at this game, this is just nothing. The gameplay is, while well, you can have fun for the first maybe five hours, once you get it and once you beat it, there's nothing keeping you from wanting to play it more and more. The system of... uh like, leveling up your characters is, like, whatever, but I always got lost in it, and I didn't care enough about it. But, dude, the state that the game came out in is not good enough. Like, gameplay-wise, is fine, but, dude, three maps, five killers and five victims, they made a live service game without any service. <laughs> like, they released these, and we played it for maybe a month or two until they even announced an update including characters. I don't know if they've added them in because we stopped playing by the time anything started happening with the game. There wasn't enough to keep us playing. And while we did enjoy our time with it, and we played it for a long time. Dude, like, I don't like the game anymore. I just lost interest, and I don't want to play it any I don't want to play it again, unless my friends want to play it, and then I'll play it with them. I don't really mind. But dude, fucking, like, whatever about this one. I'm gonna put it in C. There. It's probably better now, but I, you lost me. You lost your audience by not updating the game in time. I'm sorry. <sighs> Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was uh, very nice. I really like this game, man. I've had it for the longest time, and this is one on my backlog that I was like, I will play that sometime. And I finally did play it. And uh, from what I've heard of people's opinions is that Treasure Tracker is very good, but the Wii U version is better just for the controls. Now, the controls on Switch can be a bit annoying, because it uses the gyroscope, and the gyroscope is kind of off-center. And you use that to unlock little things for puzzles and stuff like that. But, listen, man. You can still have a very good time with this game. 
game looks amazing. The puzzles are top notch. I love trying to solve them. I never had to use a guide for it because I figured it out all on my own, and it felt so rewarding figuring out how the, all the puzzles worked and getting all the well, all the stars in the game. I think all of those little collectibles. I didn't actually get all the collectibles, and when I beat the story, the main campaign of the game, the Odyssey levels unlocked, but I never actually played, I think I played maybe three or four of them, but I had my fill once I beat the game. End of the day, Treasure Tracker's an A. I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, very good game. I got my fill on it once I beat the story. I didn't, pl I didn't go back to get all the collectibles or play the extra levels. But I really enjoyed my time with it. Ho ho ho! Now it's time for a big boy game. Starfield. Starfield is... C. End of C. Bottom of C. I had my thoughts on the game when I played it. And I didn't watch anyone's reviews. I didn't listen to anyone's thoughts on the game when I played it. I played it for myself for a couple of hours. And then I formed my own opinion. I want to say that because everyone else's opinion of all the videos I've watched on people's thoughts. And all that stuff. It's just the same stuff that I thought, so I don't know how interesting my thoughts are going to be on this game, but what my thing boils down to was, this game is fucking boring. This game is so boring. <laughs> it's just like, dude, what are you doing? You give us all these planets to explore, but to get from one planet to another, you have to go through so many different menus. And it's just, what, what's the point? Like, that was my biggest thing for me was that in a space game, the space travel is fucking not there. That made me want to play No Man's Sky. I nearly played No Man's Sky. I didn't because I had my fill on space games, apparently. Starfield fucking ruined it for me. When you finally get to a planet, what's there to do? Fucking nothing, man. Listen, I had this whole fucking thing planned out of what my thoughts on Starfield are. But what does it come down to? What do my thoughts come down to is that it's not worth it. Play it for an hour or two and you'll understand that, like, while the game can feel very expansive in the main hub city of, um, I already forgot what the fucking name was, but the place where the cult you're in, or club is in, the cult club, I don't really fucking know, but they, in that, in that city, that city looks pretty, um, like, bustling, like, it feels like there's a lot of stuff going on there. Travel to any other planet, and you see there's nothing to do, there's maybe two places of interest to visit, and then some minerals you can collect, and it's just fucking, like, I don't need this. From Starfield. Hey, just go play Skyrim. <laughs> Let's go play Skyrim. Starfield is fucking boring, man. Don't give a shit about it. Bottom of C tier for me. So what did I play after Starfield was actually something entirely spontaneous for me. Was Metroid Zero Mission. I've wanted to get into Metroid for so long because I've never played a Metroid game. But I've always been interested in it. Like, I really wanted to play Prime. I really wanted to play Metroid Dread. But after, like... Just doing nothing in my room. I was like, don't I have like all the Metroid games by now? I think I do. And I do, actually, like technically, I think. So I boot up the Wii U and I have Metroid Zero Mission on there, which is a remake of the first Metroid game, right? So I was like, I'll give this a shot. Dude, Metroid Zero Mission? Fucking S tier. This game is so good. I can't believe I put this off for so long. But Metroid Zero Mission is so good. Now I understand why Metroidvania is a like a subgenre or a genre of its own. Because the main whole the main thing about Metroid is one big map with sections to explore. And it works perfectly in Zero Mission. I feel a bit weird talking about a GBA game because how long can you talk about a tiny game like this? But again, this is the thing with Pikmin 1, is this game didn't have that big of uh, of like a of, of a of a map this game didn't have that big of a scope so the developers just worked on perfecting every significant detail in this game that while as i mentioned before i'm not big on 2d platformers my exception are metroidvania games hollow knight i have played years ago and i love that game to death and dude metroid zero mission is just that i think i prefer hollow knight at the end of the day but zero mission is so fucking Good man. Metroid Zero Mission is not a long hour at all. Maybe like four or five hours. But I loved every second of it, dude. I wanted to replay it as soon as I was done. Because, like, they, they give you the little list of, like, the percentage of how much you had discovered. I discovered maybe 60% of the game. And I felt I explored a lot of the map. 
I felt like I took my time in exploring so much of the map, but I explored only barely half of the game. So I want to play it again. I wanted to make a YouTube video about Zero Mission. Like, when I made my collection video, I was like, oh, I want to make videos again, but it's really tough for me to decide on a topic. Zero Mission was going to be that topic. I never made that video because I'm a lazy piece of shit. But if I was to ever make another video, like in the same vein of the collection video or the Persona video, it would be on Zero Mission. Maybe, and I have played every Metroid game video. I don't know if I'll do that, but like, maybe something small, like just talk about the first Zero Mission game, because I love this game so much, dude. Please play it at some point. I don't know how you'll play it at this point, maybe an emulator, because I don't think it's on Switch Online, and sorry about that Wii U shop, but you can't buy it on there anymore. But it's one of the best games I've ever played, one of the most tightly crafted games. Definite S tier. Now comes F099. And you know, I, I played this for maybe an hour. Like, I had fun with it, but I'm not a big F-Zero guy, at least on the original F-Zero, because that's the only one that I've played. I really want to play the N64 one or the GameCube one, because those ones look fun as fuck. But the SNES one, I have played, and I don't care too much about it. And F-Zero 99 is frantic, chaotic, and while it is very well made, I don't really care. I will put it in B tier. Actually, right there, yeah, below Killing Floor 2. Sorry, I feel like people might like that game more than I do, but... Maybe I need to play more of it to have more of a positive experience or more of a positive opinion on it. But for me, I just didn't, it didn't grab me, right? Played a bit of it. And they have released like tons of updates for it too, which is very good to see. But I just kind of don't want to go back to it. It's unfortunate, but oh well. But now, we come to Mortal Kombat 1. Now, Mortal Kombat was a game that I never played until I played 11 with my friends a couple of years back. And this was when I started liking fighting games. Because, uh, as I mentioned... In that one video I did, the Persona one, <laughs> was that fighting games are not my thing. I had tried to get into them, but I'm always more of a Smash Brothers guy. But playing Mortal Kombat 11 and versing my friends in that game made me really like fighting games. And Mortal Kombat 1, I bought it day one, and some of my friends did, and we played it a lot. And I really enjoyed it. I didn't play the story, so I don't know how the story is. I know that it's like a, a reboot, I suppose. Some people can like that, some people don't. I don't have any say. I don't have any opinion because I never played the story in these games. But from the multiplayer, I really like it. I'm not a big fan of the feature of the companions that can jump in. Or the cameos, What I forgot what they're called. I wasn't a big fan of it, but it was uh, kind of funny seeing Goro come in and just do his... <laughs> I can just beat the shit out of the person that I'm versing. And we had a lot of fun in it, but we haven't gone back to it in a long time. And I don't know if we will go back to it. Maybe we will, but I we have no plans. I will put this at uh, put this at the top of B tier. Maybe an A tier if I had played the story. But again, all I've played is the multiplayer, and that is very fun. But there's only so much you can do with one v one multiplayer games. So, boom. Now we get to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, a two D platformer. Which uh, I have heard so many great things about Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze that I finally decided to give it a chance myself and what can I say man hmm what can I say I will say it is there S tier a very very well made 2D platformer that while again I don't think 2D platformers I bruh while I don't think 2D platformers are my thing this is probably one of the best ones I've played very hard well, it can be very hard, but just the level design is so well made and everything feels so in place. I never felt like lost in the game. The only gripe is that I don't play over too long because again, 2D platforms are my thing. So after maybe an hour, hour and a half of playtime, I just turn it off. But it's not that long of a game. It's only like five hours long. So I didn't like, you know, I, I didn't lose interest for me, right? I played it through to the end. And while I haven't gone back and gotten everything in the game and... I don't know if there's extra content you can do after you finish the story. I don't really want to, but from my time that I have played with it, one of the best made 2D platformers, all right? So let's put it that. Okay, let me tell you about Roblox. Roblox, I'm sure you know about it. I know of the name, but I never actually really understood what the game was until me and my friends played it. Uh, dude, it's, it's, i am be honest. We had some real fun in this game, but I... Dude, it's a kid's game. People make their own maps and people play it. It's like Gmod, right? But like for four-year-olds. And granted, we had a lot of fun in this game. It's hard to describe this, right? 
The game is so greedy of trying to get your money off of you. But I don't know who that falls on, on the actual developers for making the uh, the in-game currency in the first place. Or the actual like map makers. Because they can get so greedy with it, but also they're probably nine-year-olds trying to get any money whatsoever. Like there's one map that like pay for getting pop-up ads and pay for these items and stuff like that. They come out every time you die. And it's an obstacle course, so you're going to die a lot. And I was like, dude, that's so greedy. I don't want this in front of me. It just feels so bad and also feels so scummy because, again, this is a children's game. And how how much they're trying to monetize off of this children's game kind of grosses me out. After all that, we had some fun in it and we had some fun playing the most brain-dead, brain-rotten maps we've ever seen. But I just feel kind of gross whenever I play it. Like, I, I, I shouldn't play this anymore. It's just, it's just so weird. It's so gross how monetary it is. And like, ugh, put it there. Middle of B. Almost done talking about these stupid fucking games. But the next game that I will talk about is Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Now again, this game was on my 2022 tier list games. But it's here again because I've actually beaten this game now. Back when I had it in my tier list video, I don't ever, I don't think I ever actually beat the game on Switch. But I have now gone and replayed it. And I played it on the hardest difficulty, so it felt more interesting to me because Pikmin 3 is a pretty easy game to play. And I did beat it, and I beat all the uh, epilogue and prologue stuff from the Deluxe Edition. So what do I have to say now? Is that Pikmin 3 Deluxe is... <laughs> Whoa, bro. I'm gonna say it's here. Up in S, definitely. I'll say it's, uh... Hmm. Say it's there, yeah. I like Pikmin 1 a bit better, but Pikmin 3... Probably has the best art style out of all the games. Pikmin 4 looks a bit more realistic than 3, but Pikmin 3 kind of plays to its strengths more. And it plays more similar to Pikmin 1 with its short, just uh, overworld, big overworlds, um, but shorter kind of runtime, right? Dude, how much can I say that I haven't said in my last tier list? But I will say now that I was very stingy about it being uh, full price for re-release. Nowadays, I don't give a fuck, man. I played the stuff that were unique to the Switch edition, and I think they're pretty nice, you know? Little challenge modes that, while not adding too much to the game's runtime, did make for some very fun moments in the game. Alright, who gives a shit that it was full price? Honestly, who should care anymore? I don't know if much people care. And while it does look weird that a short game like this was listed at full price, high, at a higher, at a, at a, oh my god, I can't talk, bro. At a higher price than when the game released originally. They added a lot to this game. They made some good gameplay tweaks. Overall, I believe this is the definitive way to play Pikmin 3. Again, the controls of Pikmin 3 Wii U edition might be a bit better because back then you could use the Wii remote. But here, the gyroscope is a bit annoying, but I got used to it pretty quickly. I think I actually used the Pro Controller to play. I really don't remember, but I think I did. If you care as well, there's my Pikmin list. Here it goes, Pikmin 4 is the best. One, three, and then two. Some people might kill me over that opinion, but hey man, can we all agree Pikmin 4 is probably the best Pikmin game out there? Now, next up, Spider-Man 2. I played this game day one, and I have played the games beforehand, Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think this is the best one. Honestly, these guys all blend together. All three of these games kind of blend together. Just Spider-Man 1 was like, the first big one, and people will prefer it for its originality in that aspect. Miles Morales, while I think the story was nowhere near as good as the first one, the gameplay is just better than the first one. And Spider-Man 2, I feel like, grabs the best parts of both of those two games. As in, I like this game's story a little bit more. And the gameplay here, well, while it's mostly just Miles Morales again, they added like some tiny things that, you, that I didn't really even notice how good they were until after I beat the game. The web wings for you, one, dude, adds so much in the traversal experience. And that the fact that, like, the special moves are only just, you hold down a button and then press a directional number, directional input on that now, is so good. I really prefer that. And how they got rid of all the amount of web gadgets and stuff. It's just tiny stuff like that, that you don't really notice while you're playing the game. When you look back on it, you're like, oh, wow, they made this just feel so much better. So Spider-Man 2. I think was one of the better games this year. Like, what did I think was bad about it? Um, well, the game was glitchy when it first came out. Felt a bit underdeveloped like that. 
The game crashed on me several times, and there were some really weird, dumb glitches that I found funny, but kind of sucked. And again, while I think the story is better, the story in these Spider-Man games, I'm never really caring about. Well, this one was the best one. I still don't really care. Yeah. But I will say, the characterization in this game was very good. Miles Morales is definitely my favorite character in this game. And he is probably my favorite Spider-Man. Hmm, I never thought about it, but it might actually be my favorite iteration of Spider-Man now. But now, here's what I want to say, right? I say all of this stuff here, about how great the game is. Something is holding me back from making this an S. I'm going to put it in A. It's the top of A. But what's bringing me back from making it an S? I A genuine question. I don't really know. Nothing stands out about this game. It's just Spider-Man again. Maybe the fact that it's just the same amount of playtime as the first game, while that's not bad, like, you kind of look at it sit, look at it, seeing, like, oh, maybe it's just, like, kind of a rehash of the first game. Because it's the same amount of hours to play. The new area that they added in, like, do you even notice that it's a different area? I really didn't notice. I couldn't tell when I was on the main island and when I was on the side island. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell. The Venom reiteration, I really didn't care about Venom in this game. I don't know, man. There's just, like, tiny things. And while I'm not fully clear to myself about what holds me back from making this... From making me think that this is a really good game. At the end of the day, I think it's just a good, like, 7, 8 out of 10. Nothing that outstanding. Man. No spark to it. Anyways. A uh, game that came out the same day as this, that I played after this, was Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I was very excited for this game. Um, It just looked like it was such a clear love letter of the Nintendo team making these games that they wanted to make one of the most special 2D platformers out there. <gasps> 2D platformers? Boom. Here's what I'll say. I loved my time with this game. Alright? I think it's probably the best Mario 2D platformer now. What else was there? Like, the original games on the NES and SNES. I don't give a shit about those ones, I'll be honest. <laughs> There's the new Super Mario Bros. series, which I only played the DS and the Wii one of. I loved them as a kid. I probably won't care about them now. But at the end of the day, it's still a 2D platformer to me. I played this for maybe four or five hours, and then I just dropped it. Again, I really loved it, but nothing was nothing was keeping me interested. I could only play it for an hour at most, and then I just turn it off and play something else, or watch something. I can't stay in this game for too long, because two D platformers just aren't my thing, man. I found it out. It's my kryptonite. It's my shit. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like two D platformers that much now. Put it right the, there. Yeah, I like Captain Toad more. Definitely, Mario Bros. Wonder is a better game than Captain Toad, but I prefer I prefer Toad over this. Next game here is again another one that I have absolutely played to death long before I long before this year. It's Attack on Titan 2: Final Battle. I've alluded to this game a lot of the times in my videos that I make that I just really love this game. So I played it this year because the Attack on Titan finale finally came out like the final 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 one and i just got into a fix of uh hey man i should play this game again bruh i'll be nice here this is a absolute soft spot for me i love this game so much my only gripe is that i'll never be able to finish it again i have tried i've tried to play this again so many times but i don't get too far into it without just getting bored of it because i've already played it man i've already played it i've beaten it once i think i've beaten it twice i've beaten all the side modes in the game I've done all I can, and this game, <laughs> the only thing I haven't done in this game is try to get the trophies, but fuck trying to get the trophies in this game, alright? It's going to take me at least 100 hours, and I've already put too many hours into this game, and apparently it's just all up to random chance of trying to find specific uh, materials. I've tried for so long, I've given up trying to get the trophies in this game. It's unfortunate, but I just can't play this game anymore. <laughs> like, do I need to explain this what this is? Like, what do you imagine, alright? It's made by Koei Tecmo. Koei Tecmo makes those Hyrule Warriors games, the Samurai Warrior ones, and they make Persona 5 Strikers. My thoughts on Koei Tecmo, they either make some of the most fun games in existence, or they make some of the most dog shit, I don't give a single fuck about these games. And Attack on Titan 2 is one of the games where I'm like, okay, you did a good job here. While you can definitely see the limitations of like how free the movement feels, all that I get from playing this game is I'm having a blast. I'm riding around with the ODM gear, and I'm loving it. I'm trying to slice up Titans, and I'm loving it. 
Play this on the hardest difficulty and you will be so invested in it, alright? I It is so difficult. But like, dude, that's what the anime is. Do you think you can stand a chance against a 20 foot titan? I don't think so. So play it on the hardest difficulty and I feel like you'll have a blast playing it. Now we come to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Of course I have played this so much already. But I decided to put it in this tier list because of the DLC maps, I suppose, and also because, fuck it, I just want to add a game into this list. So, my thoughts on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is it's probably my favorite Mario Kart game. The DLC tracks are fine, and I'm glad that they have the most tracks ever in a game now. You can definitely tell what is an original map creation because they are so new, so innovative, and so fun. And what is a remastered course because they are good, but kind of boring in the Mario Kart art style. There. Fates? I oh, fucking love Fates, man. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a fun game, and I have played a lot of it, but... I mean, I only played it this year for the DLC tracks, and then I played a bit of online just to see how it was like. And, dude, I am so good at racing games. And I get fucking locked in on trying to find the most efficient way to drive in this game. That I love it, but I've not gone back to it that much. Like, I've had my feeling playing the online on it. And now I'm like, alright with it. So... Next up is Persona 5 Tactica, a brand new game in the Persona series. And I, um, I'll be honest, when this game was coming out, I was not really, uh, was not really caring about it, right? Like, I was more interested in that Persona 3 remake that they were making. But Persona 5 Tactica was out, and I was like, really, another one? Alright. But I have played it, I have beaten it, and I have gotten all the trophies in the game. Now, Persona 5 Tactica is after Persona 5 Royal and p before Persona 5 Strikers. It happens right before the very end of Persona 5 Royal, I suppose. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good story of um, being in this world. And how much should I say? Story is pretty good, all right? I think Strikers has a better story. I think Persona 5 Royal definitely has a better story. But Tactica is still... Very, very good. The gameplay, uh, as a Fire Emblem uh, lover myself, is very, very good. I love the actual design of how the entire structure is laid out, like when you're doing combat in the game. And all the tiny little things, right? There are no items in the game, which can make it a bit more boring, but also makes you focus more on just how to, to, do, how to do these attacks. The actual strategy in beating these enemies and like beating the level is so fun and the little missions you're given like beat this in a set amount of turns no one in your party gets KO'd I have cleared all of that and it was pretty um consistent in doing it I was pretty good at it and it very it kept me very entertained like I was really interested in playing this game my biggest thing with this game is how the story is played out again the story is good uh I <sighs> new characters are fine arena I really like Arena. Toshiro, I think he's alright. In the end, he gets a lot, a lot better, but he's just like, I don't really give a fuck about him. <laughs> but man, you play this game, and it is a shorter game, which is good, but it's all played out like a 2D visual novel, which, uh, as someone who has gone through Persona 5 Royal many times, where it's never a 2D visual novel, it's all got 3D cutscenes, so you're entertained more. And from Persona 5 Strikers, which has got the same gist to it, to Tactica, which has got a brand new art style, which I like the art style. But to only see that in 2D cutscenes, I, I, I lost interest in the story, man. Like, during the second world, or second um, kingdom, very much so, I was losing interest. First kingdom, world, basically. First Kingdom was pretty good, story-wise, it was an intro, so it's fine. Third Kingdom, it was uh, it was where it all picked up, and that was my favorite kingdom of them all. And the fourth one is whatever, but it's the end of the story, so it's fine. The second one, dude, lost all interest. It picked back up again after the end of the Second Kingdom, but during that, dude, fucking, I was just not having fun. So the story comes in waves, and it can be very good, but it can really just lead you getting bored for after a bit. I think the last thing really is the music in this game. I like it when I was playing the game, listening back to it now. I very much like the instrumental tracks on this game. 
the vocal ones. I don't think they were that special, man. I like the intro song. I like Quiet Storm. I like Got Your Tail. Truth or Dare. Don't really care about the other ones though. And the mixing in this game is weird. The Just in that intro song, you can barely hear Lin's voice. It's all uh, being interrupted or... Uh, it's just the actual instrumental is too loud in those songs. Which is maybe why the instrumental songs sound a lot better. Because with the vocal ones... Like, it's just, it's just been, it's, I could just hear the drums and the guitar and all that. Oh, and also the, um, actual variety in the vocal songs pro felt pretty bland. Like, it all had the same kind of feel to them, right? Where with Persona 5 and, uh, Strikers and, like, Persona 5 Dancing and Q, like, they all had different vocal songs and they all felt different from each other. With this one, I couldn't tell some of them apart. Like, I, I see the name when I'm on Spotify. I see the name of that song, and I'm like, oh, which one is this one? I don't know. And that kind of... That's like... Wow. That's like a wow, right? For a Persona game, to have vocal songs that kind of blend in together. That's my thought on the main game. It's a, it's a good continuation of the Persona 5 story, but it kind of loses interest for me. And the music is good, but... Most of the instrumental songs. But there's also Day 1 DLC that came out for this game. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was a catchy and Kasumi, which it's great seeing those people again. But like, you see that and you're like, oh my god, fine. Are they going to have like more to their story than just being fucking sidelined in Strikers where they weren't even mentioned at all? Here? No. It happens like in November, like during the main game. And once the whole thing's done, spoilers, they lose their memory. So basically this never happened. And it's like, god fucking damn it. Have something happen with these characters, please. I really like them. More so Akechi again. Akechi's my favorite Persona 5 character. Have these guys do more, please. Have them being in a sequel or something like that. And not just in this spin-off where at the end they forget about it anyways. So it doesn't matter anyways. It's like, for fuck's sake, man. But the gameplay in the DLC is a bit different. Where there's paint on the ground and you have to only be on the paint of that color to do attacks and stuff like that. And I kind of like that a lot more than in Striker and then in Tactica. Which is fine. The story is kind of good, but kind of whatever. It's really short. Listen, man. I played the DLC, alright? And it's good. But it left not that big of an impact on me. It's good to see the characters again. But, like, Jesus Christ, man. I don't, like... Do something else, please. <laughs> like, let me see Persona 3 Remake. Let me see Persona 6. Let me see an Akechi game. Let me see something about Akechi, please. Alright, after all that, Persona 5 Tactica. I'm gonna put, uh, here. Top of A tier. It's just the little things that keep me from putting it in S tier. If it was all in 3D, if the mixing was a bit better, if the characters in the game did more than just be there, be vehicles for the two new characters to have something to happen. A thing with the Persona 5 spin-offs is that the main characters, while they are there, they are only there to uh, help with the new characters in the game. With Strikers, it was with Zenkichi and Sophia. With Tactica, it was with Arena and Toshiro. Which is fine, and again, I like seeing them again. But there's nothing new to these guys. They are only there to service the new characters. Which is fine because I like the new characters in this game. But come on, man. Strikers made me really like Ryuji a lot more. Strikers made me like Haru. I really like Makoto. I really like Arn. G give them something to do, please. After getting all the trophies in Tactica, I was like, fuck it. Let me play Persona 5 Strikers again. Going up here. A lot of S's. Wow, there are a lot of S's here. I like Strikers more than Tactica. The gameplay in this game I like more than Tactica. Again, a Koei Tako game, so it can be a real hit or miss. This time, big hit. I like the story a bit more here. Again, I was losing a bit of interest, and I started skipping, or just like kind of skimming through cutscenes near the middle and end of the game. But it is still a Persona 5 game. The story is still very good, and it's really nice seeing these characters. And at least in this game, the main characters, it felt like they had more to do than in Tactica. Like, again, this game propelled Ryuji into really good character territory. An was really good in that game. Yusuke and, Yusuke and Haru were really good in this one. Biggest downfall for this game is... Dude, fucking, like... This game looks gross. <laughs> like, has anyone noticed this? The poly... I th okay. Coming from someone with no experience in how games are made or anything like that, something about the way that the character models look like they're low polygons or this just grosser a muddier look to them it's not interesting to look at and this is where 3d cutscenes are like yikes 
I tried playing this on the Switch, and that's uh, just not going to happen. It just looks terrible, and it runs terribly. I played this on PS5 again, and I had New Game Plus, so I was just fucking r rushing through all the battles, which was really fun. But the biggest thing for this is, like, one, the 3D cutscenes, like, the pre-rendered cutscenes, they, they suck in this game. And just the normal, like, 3D cutscenes when they're just talking and stuff like that, they, the character designs they look gross. And the whole art style looks just way more uh, muddier. It's just kind of gross. But, hey, man. It's Persona 5 Strikers. And it's got some really good music in it, man. Some of my favorite songs came from this game. You Are Stronger, Axe to Grind, Counter-Strike, Daredevil. I love those ones. This game's very good, man. Probably my favorite Persona spinoff. Yeah, probably. End of the day, very good game. Very good Persona 5 game. Next game to talk about, it's the big one that everyone's been talking about recently. Who knows if it'll still be relevant by the time the YouTube video comes out. It's Lethal Company. Uh, m only me and one other friend have been playing it at the time. Dude, it's one of the scariest games I've ever fucking played. I had seen everyone talking and playing about this game, but I never actually saw any of the gameplay. I had no idea what it like what it played like i just knew that it was a big viral horror game so me and my friend bought it and we played it and those first two days of us playing it were <laughs> some of the most terrifying experiences we've ever had if you don't know i don't know why you wouldn't you're just working for a company you have to travel to a moon and find scrap and sell it within the deadline and that's it and there are things trying to kill you and <laughs> those first two days were we knew absolutely nothing were utterly terrifying and we were only the two of us which i felt like playing it with more friends will make it more fun but something about just you and one other person adds a whole new horror aspect to playing this game because what we would try to do first is one person stay in the ship and watch the monitor the other one goes in and gets the strap gets the scrap and gets out the fact that we were using the walkie-talkies just to tell them, like, imagine this. Imagine you're walking through, and just on the walkie-talkie you hear, run, run, filled with so much dread that I loved it so much. It was amazing. And after that, like, we got good at the game, and we were doing it very efficiently. We got very good. And we were just having a blast in the game. It's very simple game mechanic of collect scrap, go sell it. But it fills you up, man. It fulfills you. It's just interesting to play. I remember this one specific time when we were playing it. We were getting very good, and we actually got enough money to go to a new moon. Because there were only five moons, and then there were three where you can buy to land at. And I, at this point, I had known that Titan 8 was the most dangerous place, but I didn't know why. So we bought that moon, and we just went in. <laughs> And we just went in, dude. As soon as we went in... <laughs> as soon as we went in, my friend, he's like, Do you hear that laughing? And I was like, what? No. And he starts, like, screaming. He's like, dude, do not see behind it. There's a girl right there. And I was like, I, dude, there's, there's actually nothing here. It was the fucking enemy of the little girl who only one person can see her here. I didn't know that that was a feature, he didn't know that was a feature, and he was hearing it, utterly losing his shit. Because he would see the girl, his vision would start to go, his hearing would start to go, he would freak out, and I'd be like, oh, dude, I don't see anything, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then we were like, oh my fucking god. Suffice it to say, we both died that night. But then we go back, like, the next day on that game. It was still very scary, but this one was more so just <laughs> action, because we were getting chased by... Two coil heads, the Jester, and the Bracken at the same time. We still died, but like, I remember just a solid period we were just running and screaming with everything chasing us. <laughs> and like, dude, I like, oh my god. This game has had some of, supplied me with some of the most horrifying experiences I've ever had. And I love this game so much. What I don't like about this one is, um, just how unfair it can be. The sentry guns, they're the turrets mainly, I really don't like. Because they've just got infinite ammo and it really ruins your progress. And that like... This one I've got a problem with, but it's... Like, I entirely understand why. It's just that there's not a lot of content to it. Like, we will still play it because we can just have fun collecting scrap and trying to deal with enemies. Because we actually try to fight back against them sometimes. 
and that could be quite fun. At time of streaming this, there's only been one update that has added one new enemy, which we haven't actually seen yet. We haven't actually seen that soldier guy. I know that there are tons of mods being made for it, and that's really awesome to see. And I know that only like one person has made this game. There's only one guy who works in this game, so I entirely understand why. But there's just I just I just wish there was like a steady flow of updates that had more content and more and more to make this game stay in the atmosphere for so much longer. Cause I have a feeling that like this game could be forgotten about pretty soon. I'm worried that it will be, and I don't want it to, because again, like it is a viral game. It is a very good viral game. Alright? I'm gonna put it above Spider-Man 2. This one. I only know about because, again, I watched Snapcube's tier list video for 2021 games. It's a game called Before Your Eyes. It's a, it's a story-driven game that is controlled by you blinking into a webcam. Dude, you have no idea how immersive that makes the game feel, where if you blink and time just passes, and you don't know how much time will actually pass, you blink to actually remember seeing things, like blink on a prompt and it will bring up something up. That's great to see. I, I, lo I love this. It's so short. And I don't want to play it again because I don't think there's much else to look at. I only spent 100 minutes in it and I beat the game. Which is good and this is the best way to play it. Definitely play it with webcam. Playing it with like a mouse button is like, dude, you will not enjoy it as much. So I hope they make like more games in this vein or... I don't like how short it was, but what are you going to do? You make another game like this, it's not going to hit the same. You make this game longer than it is... Your eyes are going to hurt because you're trying to keep them open for so long. You make this a movie. I really like the story in this game, but the the having to blink your eyes really adds so much to your immersive, immersive stuff because life flashing before your eyes. Like, that's the whole point. So I love it. It's just really short, all right? I'll put it right there. Yeah, right there in A tier. Power Wash Simulator. I've heard about this game. I've seen it. Uh, it was free on PS Plus, so I bought it. Why well, I, I I got it? I played it with my friends. Uh, I think I'm the biggest fan of this game out of my friend group. Really satisfying game to play, and I've, I have gone and played by myself a couple of times. This is pretty relaxing. I'll probably play it after the stream just to wind down or something like that. It's really fun to play, man. It's a really good experience. Power wash simulator. Like, do you, do you want me to explain anymore? It's a simulator. Imagine this: you get a power washer and you clean stuff, and that's it. And it's really fun. And the controls, I think um, I think I should play this game on PC, because I'm playing on a PS5, and the motion controls, uh, they feel pretty good. But at some points, it, glitch it glitches out a lot, man. It'll just start, like, drifting or gliding at some points, and that's kind of annoying. But you do try to play it with joystick, and it's, <laughs> it's just not the same. So motion controls is a way to play it, or with a mouse and keyboard. I would like to try this on PC, but, man... I already have it on PS5, I have it digitally, and I bought it physically, it's down there, because it was for like 23 bucks on Amazon, so I got it physically, it's pretty cool. Power Wash is going to be right there. Final two games, first one is the finals, I've played about 30 minutes of it, it's got some good promise to it, it is a Ubisoft game though, so I have no faith in it, and like, I don't know how much more we'd play, I, uh, I honestly I haven't played enough to really form that big of an opinion on it. It's got some good gameplay loop while I'm um, still being kind of a uh, bland IMO. I'll have to play more to get a more thoughtful experience on this one, but I will put it right. Yeah, that makes sense. Bottom of C. Okay. The final game that I am still currently playing is The Last of Us Part 1. I have already played this game on PS4 and I have beaten it. I have played the full story. This is the remake that came out on PS5, and I'm not the only one to say this. What a fucking pointless remake that they made. Like, this already looks like a very good game for the PS3, and then they remastered it, they touched it up a bit for the PS4, and it looks great. And they make a PS5 remake? <sighs> Why? I mean, the game looks amazing, but they released it at 125 bucks here in Australia, which is very weird, because it's 70 in the US, and the price in Australia, it really differs. It could be, if a game is 70 bucks over in America, it's either going to be 90 bucks here, 100 bucks, or 125. It doesn't make any sense which one it's going to be, but for this one, it was 125, and I picked it up on Black Friday for 70 bucks. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just play it, get my money's worth out of it. It's fucking pointless, alright? It is still The Last of Us, and this is... Probably the definitive way, definitive version of this game. 
Granted, there's no multiplayer anymore, but like I didn't really care about the multiplayer on Last of Us One, so whatever. Um, what do I think of Last of Us like in general? I really enjoyed it when I played it, but uh, nothing really stuck with me. Like I get Joel and Ellie's big thing of like, it's a really good relationship to see unfold. But you know, I'm more of a Persona guy myself. <laughs> uh, right now I'll put it uh, in A tier. Yeah, right in there. Very good game. Very pointless remake, but it is still a remake of one of the greatest games of the PS3 era. So, you know, I'll take it. Maybe not at 125 bucks, but I'll fucking take it. So with that, all of the games are on the board. Would I change any of these rankings before I do my final thing? Um, I'll move Fates up from Attack on Titan 2. I'll actually move this down to there. Yeah, I'll move it down there. S tier is looking... I'll move that up there, actually. <laughs> alright, let's see. I'll move it up to the top. It's still my favorite game of all time, alright? Persona 4 Golden is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> This is my final ranking. Well, I say final. There is one last thing I have to do. I have to rate the best game. And I have to rate the worst game. Now. As is the same with last year's tier list. I already know what is the worst game of 2023. It's DayZ. I fucking hate DayZ. That's it, man. Game fucking sucks. I had so much fun in it when I was with my friends. But the lead up to get to your friends is absolutely not worth it. It is some of the worst gameplay, worst game design, worst game choice I've ever seen. And the game, I believe it isn't supported by the devs. Like they will just do barely any support for it. The game feels so glitchy, it feels so empty and so open that I do not enjoy my time with it. I'll play it again with my friends at some point. But what is my best game of 2023? So I mentioned here, right now, Persona 4 Golden is the top of the list because it is my favorite game of all time but I wouldn't put it in best game of 2023 because it's only on this list because it's a re-release right it'll feel weird to have a re-release of my favorite game be best game feels like a bit of cheating so I won't do that we've got a lot of nominees up here man I feel like this year was a very good year for games coming out in this year but also just the stuff that I played I really enjoyed what I played let's go down from bottom to top and just kind of have a I have a little bit of a talk on it. I did that last year again, so let's just do it this year. Attack on Titan 2 can have some of the most fun you can ever play in a video game. And I mean, I love the source material. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of the best made 2D platformers out there. It is still a 2D platformer though, and I really don't like those. So it's down here for me. Won't be banking best game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I only included because I played the DLC tracks. The DLC tracks would not make this game game of the year so it is not here persona 5 strikers it's a very well made well told out game that looks a bit like piss so it's fine fire emblem fates it's got some great characters some great gameplay and my favorite story in the fire emblem universe do you want me to tell you what i remember from that story no because i don't remember anything about it gravity rush is just the one of the most like perfect compact games out there uh but sadly i would not make it game of the year uh, nothing stand out, nothing stands out too much to me compared to the ones that I will talk about in a second here. But still, like, Gravity Rush is such a sweet little game. Play it, please. Pikmin 3 Deluxe is the definitive way to play Pikmin 3. Uh, the controls can feel a bit weird at some points, but... Dude, it's fucking Pikmin. Just play Pikmin 3. Metroid Zero Mission. I mean, you can tell why they made an entire subgenre of games just based off this and, well, well Castlevania because of Metroidvania. <laughs> but you can see why, right? It's an amazing tightly knit, well-crafted game that everyone should play, and it's only like five hours long. It's really compact, and you can get multiple playthroughs out of it that I should do multiple playthroughs over one day. Pikmin 1 is the perfect way to start a series, IMO. Again, pretty short game, but they just make it compact, and they make it work really well. The story, the gameplay, the atmosphere, the characters, the story, all of this stuff, top-notch, man. And the Switch re-release, Probably the best we're going to get, okay? Resident Evil 4. One of the best looking, most horrifying games. Most well played games. The best definitive edition. And the best way to play Resident Evil 4. I should finish it one day. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Most open, most free, most beloved game of all time. To me. Such a spectacle, alright? 
They spent so much time making this game, and it felt so worth it. They spent more time making this game than Breath of the Wild, apparently, and you can see why, because it's the definitive, definitive open world game to me, alright? You can do whatever you want, however you want, and they perfected that. Pikmin 4 is best game. <laughs> alright, I'm just going to skip it, alright? Pikmin 4 is probably Nintendo's best game, alright? For the Switch, at least. Dude, the, it's the ultimate Pikmin experience, and that makes it the ultimate game. All the Pikmin types are back. Ochi being brought in is so fun. And the, like, the whole map design feels top-notch. The story is very good, even though it is a retelling of the first one, which I don't really like, but the story itself is very good. I love Olimar. I love the customizable characters. I love the entire SS Shepherd crew, the ship crew. Pikmin 4 and Tears of the Kingdom, you could swap around as best game. This one comes down to personal preference. I am much more a Pikmin fan than I am a Zelda fan. And again, Persona 4 Golden, like, come on. If I put that there, that would be a crime. I, I, it's my favorite game of all time, alright? Make me choose something different this time. Pikmin 4, please play it. It's currently selling pretty well, and I hope they make DLC for this game, and I hope they make a next Pikmin 5. Like, th this is the best Pikmin game, and it's, it's like, probably one of my, it is definitely my one of my favorite games of all time. Alright, Pikmin 2 was probably my second favorite game of all time. But this one is better than Pikmin 2, man. So, hey man. Boom. So with that, I believe I've um said everything I need to say. This is my tier list here, man. A very good year for games. Only ones I didn't like. Well, Security Breach sucks. Starfield was very disappointing. Astral Chain is whatever. Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Dead Island 2 were undercooked. And then B tier is like, okay. A tier, a lot of stuff in A tier, a lot of great games that just maybe have one glaring issue or just nothing too outstanding to bring it up to S tier, and everything in S tier, dude, like, look at these games, can you disagree with me? Pikmin 1, Resi 4, Persona 4 Gold and Pikmin 4, a lot of 4s in this, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, would you agree, would you disagree? I hope you enjoyed. So I guess with that, it's the end. Do I have anything else to add? No. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.